This is immigration attorney Parviz Malakudi, and in this video, I want to go over expungements for immigrants. What's the effect? Uh, does it take away the conviction? Does it not? If it doesn't, can it still help you? I'm going to go over that in this video. So first and foremost, the general rule is that if you have a conviction as an immigrant and you expunge that conviction, the conviction still exists, okay, for the purposes of immigration. USCIS immigration agencies still consider that you have been convicted for that crime, okay? But that doesn't mean that there can't be an advantage for you in your immigration process by going through an expungement, okay? And I'm going to explain that right now. There's, per, there's at least three situations in which expunging a conviction can help you, okay? And there's others as well, but these are the three most common ones that I see, okay? And the first one is in the context of DREAMers, okay? So DREAMers who are DACA recipients or DACA eligible, if they convict, excuse me, if they're convicted of a significant misdemeanor, which is typically a violent crime, a drug-related crime, a DUI, why, okay, a domestic violence crime, they can't apply, they're not eligible to apply for DACA anymore, okay, they are prima facie non-eligible, they cannot even be considered, okay, so for a significant misdemeanor. However, in some U.S. states, definitely the case in California here where I practice, some crimes, okay, some significant uh, misdemeanors for the purposes of a DACA renewal, if they're expunged, okay, they now make the dreamer eligible to apply for DACA again or to apply to renew DACA. Now that's at the end of the story, they still may be denied, okay, denied on discretion, which basically means that USCIS says, yes, we see that you expunged it, okay, but we still don't think you deserve it because you haven't shown us you deserve it. And I have other videos on that. I'm happy to link to those above. Uh, but the point is that for a dreamer, for that dreamer, expunging that significant misdemeanor in some states gets them back into the game to at least be able to apply again, whereas before that, they wouldn't be able to apply. So that's the first example, okay? The first context in which an expungement can really be impactful, okay, for an immigrant that's been convicted of a misdemeanor. The second area, basically, that it can really help in is for immigrants that are applying to naturalize, okay? So for green card holders. An immigrant has a legal permanent residence, okay, and they want to apply for naturalization, apply for citizenship. One of the general requirements of that is that the person has to have a period of at least five years. Well, it's not at least, it's five years of good moral character leading up to the submission of the naturalization application or three years of good moral character if the immigrant's also married to a U.S. citizen. Um, sometimes, oftentimes I see this happen, the immigrant will have a misdemeanor, often a DUI, maybe a petty theft, maybe, you know, something, you know, some small conviction, okay, just outside of the five-year period of good moral character, okay? Now, technically, USCIS can still consider that conviction, okay, outside of the five-year good moral character period if the USCIS officer thinks that whatever issue, okay, was that caused that conviction, basically is still continuing into the good moral character. Basically that the person hasn't rehabilitated themselves. They haven't shown that they're over that, okay? This is where the expungement comes in, okay? An immigrant that is trying to show that they have good moral character in the last five years, okay, in the good moral character period, what we call the statutory period, if they expunge the conviction outside of that, that can be a factor, okay, in showing USCIS that they've rehabilitated themselves. Because remember, for expunging a conviction in California and in many states as well, there's certain requirements. If there's probation, probation has to have been finished, okay, the person has to have typically, you know, had a clean record since they were convicted, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's the second category. That's the second context in which a, a an expungement of a conviction can really help an immigrant with their immigration situation. The third one is in the context context of waivers, waivers of inadmissibility, particularly the I-601, I-601A provisional waiver. So this is an extreme hardship waiver, okay? These are for people who basically have in it grounds of inadmissibility, most often the ground of inadmissibility of unlawful presence. A lot of DREAMers have this as well, a lot of DACA recipients. And in order to apply for, in order to be successfully, to successfully apply for an I-601, I-601A waiver, uh, there's two factors actually. The first factor gets a lot more attention, which is that you have to show extreme hardship to a qualifying family member, okay, which is typically a spouse or a parent, okay. Um, the second factor, which doesn't get as much attention, is that the applicant also has to show that they merit the discretion of the attorney general, okay. That's just legalese that, to mean that USS thinks you're a good person, you're somebody that has ties to the United States, and basically, you're somebody who deserves to stay, okay? And that's where the expungement can help, okay? If you're applying for an I-601, I-601A waiver, which, by the way, if you're doing it, you probably want to go with an, an immigration attorney. But if you're, if you're applying for an I-601, I-601A waiver, you want to have every factor possible in your favor. And if you have a 
a, a misdemeanor conviction before and you expunge that, that's a factor that can help basically show that you merit the discretion of the attorney general. So these are three examples, okay? These are three common samples, definitely the most common ones I see. There's others as well, uh, but these are three uh, context in which expunging a conviction can help you for an immigrant, can still even help you for immigration purposes. So that's it. If you have any general questions, put them in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer all of them. If you have any specific questions, if you want to discuss your particular situation, click on the link below, book a consultation. I'd love to talk to you. Have a great one.